What's up, everybody? It's your boy Melody for another classic review, and Happy New Year, everybody. Well, it says New Year's Day was yesterday, but hey, eh, better late than other. So yeah, let's start this brand new year. I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the Will Vinton stop motion claymation fantasy film, The Adventures of Mark Twain. Oh boy. It was released in 1985. Both in the US and UK. Well, UK was dubbed as Comet, Qu Comet Quest. But yeah. Before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, are you about to meet Satan? If so, well, you better pray to God not to stay with him or you're stuck in hell forever. <laughs> so yeah, The Adventures of Mark Twain, or in the UK, like I mentioned, it was called Comet Quest. <laughs> it was directed by Will Vinton, starring James Whitmore. It was released on May of 1985 and damn and this was one of Will Vinton's first films because this was a tough one which the film features several series of vigilants extracted from several of Mark Twain's works built around a plot that features Twain's attempt to keep his appointment with Haley's Comet him and the three children, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, and Becky Thatcher, travel on the airship between various adventures. Yeah, Haley's Comet. If you don't remember, he passed away when Haley's Comet arrived during the time of his death. And I think they released this when Haley's Comet was about to return. Damn. <laughs> Ain't that weird? I remember watching. I think the Will Vinton documentary is actually quite interesting. It explains the, how this became a. I think it was botched because of the people. Like the it's not because the film was good. Is that it's the publicity for the film made more harder? I can't blame the people who were doing the publicity. They didn't give this film enough love. As you know, it was directed by Will Vinton, written by Susan Shaburn. Based on the works of Mark Twain, it was produced by Wilden, starring James Whitmore, edited by Kelly Baker, Michael G Gull, Will Vinton, Billy. Music by Billy Scream, production by Will Vinton Production, now called Laika. And Harbor Town Films, distributed by Clubhouse Pictures, released on March 1st of 1985, with a running time of 87, 86 minutes, with a budget of $1.5 million, and the box of, oh, of 849000 I feel bad for them. I wish they had, this film got, okay, if they managed to make it win one Oscar, <laughs> damn. This film should have gotten an Oscar for this because this is a good movie. But, you have to find the idiots who have to botch this for, for the publicity one. Always hire your own pu publicist for the film to make it good. Because, hey. As for the cast, uh, besides James Whitmore as Mark Twain, we have Mike Michelle Morena as Becky Thatcher, Greg, Gary Krug as Huck Finn. Huckleberry Finn, Chris Ritchie as Tom Sawyer, John Morrison as Adam, Carol Eldon as Eve, you know, the story of Adam and Eve, Dallas McKenna as Jimmy Smile and the Newspaper Boy, Herb Smith as The Stranger, Mark Twain's Doubleganger, we have Marley Stone as Aunt Polly, we have Michelle Mirana and Wilbur Vincent as The Mysterious Stranger, Wally Newman, as Captain Stormfield, Tim Connor as Three Headed Alien, Charles Tolles as Saint Peter, Billy Scream as the Index Excavator, Will Vinton as Daniel Webster, Billy Victor as God, Captain Downs as Injun Joe, Engine Joe, Gary Thompson as Baby Kane. Holy shit. Wait, wait, who was saying? 
I'm trying to find that out. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, I'm a serious stranger. Okay, that's Satan. They didn't put the same like <laughs> you put a Satan right there. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> As for the production, the concept was inspired by the famous quote by the author. I came in with Haley's comment in nineteen you know in eighteen thirty five. It is coming again next year, nineteen ten. I expect to go out with it. I will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't go out with Haley's comment. The Almighty has said, no doubt. Now here are these two accountable freaks. They came in together. They must go out together. Mark Twain died on April 21st of 1910, one day after Haley's comment reached Perihelion in 1910. Like he said, he made. Yep, he went. Out, he came in. He went out along with the comment. The anime film, which tested well with teens and college students before it was labeled a G rating, which hurt their box office chance, was shot in Portland, Oregon. And when he asked about the rumors of the film being made by a 17 person crew, Vincent stated, Well, it's all true. So, that's probably exaggerating a bit. 17 or so rep represent the full time staff. And then freelance people came and went. Plus, you have musical talent, written talent, and things that go beyond the no that number. We shot the film in a converted house that had a barbershop in front of it, so we call it Barbershop Studios. The bedroom and the things were edited, editing rooms and offices. The high ceiling basement was conventionally connected to the a 4,000 square studio, foot studio that we built in the back, and that the basement was where the animators and sculptors work on the characters, so yes. We spent a lot of time in the basement. Which, yeah, I was watching the documentary about it, and they actually showed the student the basement. It's like a small house, like a stairway, a brick stairway going up next to a barber shop, right there. Which is actually pretty cool. They turned a tiny house into a studio. As for the reception and legacy, on Rotten Tomatoes, it's going at eighty percent. But this is from when it gained the call following. Based on review by five critics with an average of 8.10. But in Common Sense Media, it has three five stars. Animation critic Charles Sun listed it as one of the best anime films of the 1980s, a year after the film's release. Pity. I can't watch this has more love because after what. After it, uh, but this film should got made more than 800,000. This should be made more like a million. After the hard work did it. And remember, this is Clay. And it took only 17 people, like he mentioned. <laughs> Most of them are freelance. And hey, there's opportunity for freelance. So, yeet. <laughs> but yeah. That is a hot log dedication and love from Will Benton. And it took like, okay. I don't know when they started doing this. I think like a year. But remember, this is from the early 80s, so yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. As for the plot, let me tell you the story about the plot. To those who don't know the story, Huckleberry Finn told the story of a snuck aboard an airship piloted by Mark Twain in an attempt to become famous a a aeronauts, aka astronauts. After having a bout of one up manship, Becky Thatcher follows them. The call their bluff. The bloom takes them, takes off, and the stowaways are soon discovered by. But are surprised to learn Mark Twain already knows their names. Upon seeing the frog, the boys had caught outside town. Twain narrates his pop first popular story, the celebrated jumping frog of Calaveras County, which that's actually. A to this day, Calavera County is still doing the, the famous jumping frog that Mark Train wrote. 
To this day, they're still doing it. <clears throat> if you're seeing the show Only America with Larry, the cable guy, the guy who voices Mater from Cars, he went there and actually did the frog jumping contest over there. <laughs> back in the history show, back in around during the 2010s era, they find that he intended to pilot his air trip to meet Haley's Comet and are worried this goal will end in all their depths. The boy stumble across the end decks of Vader, a strange elevator that can take them to any part of the vessel or into any twin stories. <sniffs> and meet up with Twain and Becky, she intrigued by a coin operated automaton of Adam and Eve, and Twain takes a chance to begin their late tale based on Eve's diary and extracts from Adam's diary. The story comes to a halt when just a storm cloud fills the Garden of Eden and a real storm surrounds the airship. Twain quickly co coaches the kids how to pilot the ship, but they fail to avoid smashing into a mountain and losing a chunk of the hull. Dejected, the trio head back to the excavator where the door opens to the adventure of Tom Sawyer. Huck and Becky are excited at the opportunity to get home. But Tom only cares about avoiding Aunt Betty's chores and changes the floor before the others can protest. Well, I don't blame him. Who does like to do chores? <laughs> Out of the open, Void merchants Mark Twain, now dressed in black in a black suit instead of his usual white one, who changes the floor and encourages kids to go into the scene from the Chronicles of Young Satan. Oh yeah, this is the one that featured Satan! <laughs> Tom fills Huck and Be Becky in his plans. <sniffs> Let's rewind back because the scene, this hero is saying that tells them we can create everything. And they start making clay people in a claymation movie, which is pretty funny. Which you can see saying he has no body. You see he has no head. He's like nothingness. He's only holding a mask when the kids are like, who are you? Satan. You see his mask start to change the horns. Like, neat. That you create anything you want. So the kids started making a little village and everything. That's when Satan starts to see people beckoning over a cow. That's when he started. He kills them both by splatting them. And then it says, Birth and destruction. He actually destroys the whole place. And then mentions about everything that starts out of nothing. And he just vanishes. Along with the rest of the groan. Damn. That right there is actually true right there. Back to us, back to Tom and Huck and Becky. On the plan. And the three conspire to sabotage the suicidal voyage. And take control of the ship. They lay low on as Tr Twain tr teaches them how to fly the vessel. And Tom senses an opportunity in the central power panel. They fall Twain into his office and tie him up. When he's a fall, fall asleep. But much to their surprise, the riot greets them again on deck. The kid asks if there's their life waiting for them after the collide of the comet. And Twain relates the story of Captain Stormfield's visit to heaven. Which... <laughs> It's actually pretty because, you know, okay, when he goes to heaven, you get your Bible, your robe. Instead, he goes to the wrong heaven full of aliens partying. And until he writes to his right heaven, where St. Peter's waiting for him. Ain't that weird. With their plan in place, the kids wait anxiously as Twain continues the story of Adam and Eve, the design of the old coop couple looking much like Mark Twain and his wife, Olivia, with Twain saying, whoever... She was, there was Eden. He laments on her death and wishes to see her again when he meets the comet. The children discover the truth behind Twain's journey. He believes he is destined to die when the, with the return of the comet and the journey in his way of accepting his fate, leaving the kids behind unharmed. It's too late, however. Tom Contraption goes off, destroying the main power and trapping them below deck. Huck's frog saves the day, leaping, leaping into from the porthole to land on the back, back of 
power button. The crew head off. The kids are now piloting the ship expect expectorly with Twain in command. They enter the comet. They finally come face to face with the strange figure who has been haunting the ship. Mark Twain's double. Twain explains that the double is his darker side, who is a much an important part of him as the light and heart humorous that they are familiar with. The two give the kids several pieces of advice, all real Mark Twain quotes, and muse on whether or not there's another life waiting for them. They merge and disappear into dust. Twain's face appears in the comments clouds as, as the tree leave. And when asked where's he going, going, ans going answers, back to Eden. The airship is blown out of the comet by Twain. And the kids decided to write up their journal in called in the book called The Adventures of Mark Twain by Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> Wait. Hold oh, it. Is Huck trying to take all the credit? Yeah, he's trying to take all the credit. Little bastard. <laughs> So yeah, that is The Adventures of Mark Twain, and by the time it was released, back in, I think it was back in, back in January 2006, it was released in DVD, and again, as a collector's edition in 2012, in DVD and Blu-ray. So, it was the only time they managed to release it. I think there was a VHS at the time, but it didn't tell us what year, but hey. But yeah, let me know what you think of The Adventures of Mark Twain. Have you seen his movie? Do you own the DVD or Blu-ray? If it came out of the VHS, tell me what year it came out on the comments down below. And also, what are your thoughts? Because remember, this is the studio that soon will become like a studio. It was still owned by Will Vinton before he was t taken away by the owner of Nike. After a failed attempt to save his studio from, from the debacle. But yeah, let me know what you think on the adventures of Mark Twain. Did you like this movie? If you like stop motion, most including claymation, I think this is for you. <clears throat> but until then, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video, and remember to write our goal of 1 million subscribers. Well, it must have been in New Year's. Eh. Well, we'll try on the anniversary of the channel again. This time it's a bigger time this time. Hell uh, yeah. Happy New Year. Until then, see you next time everybody. Peace.